We don't trust the human heart to make romantic decisions on its own anymore. And why should we now we've got technology? These days, people meet using online dating algorithms, they flirt over Twitter, swap mucky photos via 4G, and have full sexual intercourse with microwave ovens. They absolutely do. But TV isn't quite as sophisticated as that. It tries to pair people off using sheer weight of numbers alone. Consider the phenomenal Take Me Out, which opens with Paddy McGuinness sliding down a pipe like a cheeky showbiz turd before summoning 30 girls into our dimension via a kind of instant hen night dispenser. It's a simple test to see if they can navigate stairs, which they don't always pass. <laughs> Why you? Because there's no God, that's why you. There's no God and we're all going to die, OK? You happy now? Get on with your dating show. Hope you meet someone nice. The titted jury then assumes the position behind 30 neon podiums in scenes resembling a Baz Luhrmann remake of the Nuremberg Trials. Then McGuinness delivers his trademark Let the X See the Y catchphrase. Let the Saturday night see the fever. <laughs> Next, a mammal is delivered down the chute and encouraged to perform basic tricks for the girls to scrutinise. Evening, ladies. My name's William and I'm from Carmarthen. The jurors then make yes or no snap judgments based on their appearance. The hive mind is displeased by your boldness. They're also shown backstory VT, so even those who've been defeated by stairs can judge the men's lifestyle. I'm really lucky, as I'm a professional footballer, getting paid to play is unbelievable. I can't. Think of anything worse than a footballer. <laughs> what about a footballer up some stairs? Less popular is Sky's existentially terrifying love machine, fronted by barking obelisk Chris Moyles and Peggy from Heidi High. Impossibly, it's actually less intellectually nourishing than Take Me Out, and establishes itself from the very start as a show for the easily pleased. Hello, and welcome to the Love Machine on Sky Living HD. Look at Stacey Sullivan, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, that's our level calibrated. You may now proceed. The love machine of the title resembles a sort of gigantic phone dial from which choosy contestants pick potential shags while the audience moves encouragement. Since the prospecty f**ks aren't allowed to speak during the selection process, it looks exactly like what will happen in the near future when you can go into a sex android showroom to choose this year's model. I don't like his jacket. OK. Oh, do you know what? You can always take it off. It's not selling tape to him. It's in my mind now. I won't forget it. Both his ears pierced. Is that any opinion about that? It's a bit too much for me, that. You're not feeling it, are you? I'm sorry, no. If they decide they actually like the look of one... Yeah, he's fit. Oh, OK! Ooh. That's good. The genitals humanoid in question is downloaded from the machine for a closer look. He stood in front of you. He picked about the wheel. He's good height as well. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what? This is actually a more rigorous meat inspection than the food standards agencies managed recently. The love machine's hardly scientific. You'd probably have about as much chance of producing a mate by holding a karaoke contest and copping off with whoever had the best voice. Fortunately, there's a show where exactly that happens too. This is Sing Date, where people look for love by singing to each other. Why? Sing Date is yet another weird televised method of choosing a life partner. In it, a music mad singleton sifts through a stack of videos of other music mad singletons crooning into their laptops like hostages forced to entertain their captors at gunpoint. It's time to start Joy's search for love. On the Sing Date site, a medley of men are ready to serenade her. There's no need to. Where is he? He looks like he's in some kind of a closet. They then choose three potential suitors from the crap heap. Joy's first choice is Stuart. Stuart was quite interesting, actually. Um, he, he was very clean cut. I love the way he danced. Very, very good voice indeed. And I love his movements. And I just think he'd be just so much fun. They then perform a live duet with each of them in turn to see if it sparks love. I know this love we share was meant to be. Then she has to pick one, just one, based on the sound of their voice and whatever decor she can spot in the background, before inviting them into the studio for the grand finale, in which they serenade each other in scenes which closely resemble a sort of amateur restaging of a Top of the Pops 2 clip from 1989. I'm ready to sing them, I tell you. <laughs> 
Billy. 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 Thank you. Joining me to discuss dating shows like Sing Date are stand-up Tony Law and comedian Richard Herring, who sings, sings in women's faces during sex. Isn't that true? <laughs> I've sub been known to do that. What yeah. did you make of, of Sing Date? I don't like singing. No. At all. Full stop. No, I, I like if you go see a band or something where they're supposed to be singing, but people who just break into song can't bear that. But it's like singing has become the most important thing. It's like X Factor, if you can sing in that yeah. sort of karaoke way. It's not like singing, it's singing in a certain type of way. So if you can sing like that, you become very rich and now you get to have, go on dates with people. Whereas if you can't sing, you're not allowed to have sex anymore. I mean, presumably the idea is that they think musical couplings always work, mm. unlike, say, Rihanna and Chris Brown or, <laughs> yeah. uh, or Phil Spector and the woman he shot. Um, <laughs> Although, in the programme, the two people who got together were really ideal for each other. They were. I am <laughs> utterly convinced they went straight home and had sex with each other, so... And are together now, I think. If you think singing is an unusual way to choose a partner, have a look at this. This is a new American show called The Choice. Uh, as the title suggests, it's a bit like The Voice. Celebrity bachelors select a potential partner on the sound of her voice alone. Hey, guys. So, first and foremost, I can assure you that I am the best. Is that right? Yeah. I am an East Coast girl at heart, but I currently live in Sin City, Nevada. I am a cocktail server on the Las Vegas Strip. I love to party. Oh. Ten seconds and have a good time. Obviously, everyone in that looks uniquely loathsome. Um, <laughs> uh, what did you make of that? Well, the men are all really famous, right? Mm. And they're the last people and, and very rich and quite sort of good looking and single. Mm. The last thing those blokes need is a dating show to get them more women. They're already getting plenty. It's like they're too lazy to go out and just go to a bar. They're so, too lazy even to do that, yeah. even to dangle themselves <laughs> out there like See, a maggot in a pond. I'm a professional poker player. <laughs> To be honest, it doesn't take that much to convince men. They no. might as well say something like, my vagina isn't full of bees. <laughs> or even, my vagina is no longer full of bees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also, all the women are identical anyway. Well, that is the um, thing. I mean, it is all sort of fairly identical, hot, yeah. America, hot American women. There's no there jeopardy. Is. That's hot, what I There isn't any jeopardy. Hot, damaged American women <laughs> in cocktail dresses <laughs> who haven't ended up in porn then go on this <laughs> show. This, this is the rung above porn. Yeah. I'd feel more comfortable if the game was completely reversed, though. What if you did a show called Glory Hole? <laughs> yeah. Someone has to stick their penis through, yeah. and whoever's on the other, it could be it could be a woman, it could be a goat, it could be your dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Be... And that's it. You guys are going on a date. Yeah. And you have I know to... what dad's like, so <laughs> I'd probably be an OK I'm go date. Oh, great. I love dad's favourite <laughs> restaurant. Yeah, yeah. yeah.